Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to our pasta class today. Glad to have everyone here. My name is Jennifer. I'm just gonna start slowly so people can trickle in and, uh, and be able to join us. I'm from Make It Sweet. We're in Austin, Texas. It is Monday afternoon, a rainy Monday afternoon, so, uh, so not so nice, but a perfect day for staying inside and making some pasta. So homemade pasta, hopefully you've had homemade pasta before. It is so different than like the box kind or even the fresh kind that you can buy at the grocery store. It's just so nice. It's, um, it's soft, it's pillowy, it's, and it's easier than you would think. So, uh, so that's, the, that's the fun part. It's not very difficult. And um, I'm kind of excited because I, I'm already making what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. So, uh, so tonight will be much easier for us. So come on in, join us, glad to, ha glad to have you here. So, uh, so once again, my name is Jennifer. I'm, I'm one of the owners that make it sweet. My husband Randy is here and uh, he's going to be working the camera and doing some stuff, so helping out. Um, and Magda is going to be online and answering questions. So if there are questions that you have along the way, just let us know. So hopefully everyone um, has had fresh pasta or you'll get the chance. You'll be able to, uh, to make pasta. We're going to use two different kinds of flour today. So I know flour has been one of those things that has been like almost impossible, almost as hard to find as yeast, right? So, uh, so it's one of the one of those difficult things. And one of the flours we're using is called a double zero flour. So this is very much a specialty flour. It's this one is actually imported from Italy. It is a uh, double zero, Anna is the brand, and um, what a double zero flour is, is that it's a lighter wheat, so it's a softer wheat, and it is milled even more finely than an all-purpose flour. So it's gonna give a really nice silky texture to our pasta. If you don't have double zero flour, and like, no one keeps, or very few people keep double zero flour at home. So uh, if you don't have double zero, just use all all purpose flour, or you can substitute cake flour if you end up having cake flour. You know, I know there's a lot of cakers out there, you know, watching, so you may have some cake flour from some, uh, from some different recipes, so this would be a good use for that too. But even just 100% all purpose flour is still going to be a really delicious pasta dough that you'll be able to work with. I'm gonna show you two different things that we're gonna do. So we're gonna make the pasta dough, and then from there, I'm gonna show you making ravioli, and I'm also gonna show you just making ribbons so that you can make noodles. And so that'll make it easy. If you don't have ravioli cutters, no worries. I'm gonna show you lots of things that you could find to be able to, to make your ravioli. All right, everyone here kind of ready to go? I don't think this one's so much a follow along as come back and like watch it through and then be able to, uh, to come back with any questions that you have and ask questions along the way much more than kind of a, a follow through. All right, so I'm going to tilt it down. Let's see, we've got a little bit different setup today because we ended up doing this so that, um, there we go, so that, uh, that works, looks good. All right, we did this uh, so that when I'm kneading, it's not gonna shake the table as much. So look, I can, I can move the table and it's not gonna jar it, so that's perfect. All right, um, this is what our dough looks like. So this one I made right before it started. It's nice and soft. It's much softer than you would think it is. You know, and so it's, it's a really easy dough to work with. And one of the things you're gonna see when we are rolling this out is just how stretchy and elastic this is. And so that's what makes it really easy to work with. So I'm just gonna put that one to the side and I'm going to, uh, to do this. You know, you guys have probably all seen uh, videos or TV shows where people are making pasta dough and they usually do it on their table. You know, and so they, they have this, this well of flour and put it out there. It's pretty messy. 
So I've done it that way. I'm not even confident enough to do it that way in front of you today. So a bowl is the perfect thing to do. But hey, at home, you know what? If you are up for the challenge and not afraid to, uh, to have some cleanup time as part of it too, then go for it. You can do this in the, in, uh, just on the table and be able to use your counter for it but I'm gonna go ahead and weigh my flour into the bowl. And so I'm just gonna hit on, I'm gonna hit unit till I'm on grams. There we go. And that has taken into account the weight of the bowl. Once I hit tear, it zeroes everything out. So it's 280 grams of our double zero flour. And so we're using a combination. If, if I used all double zero flour, this would be a really super soft uh, dough. And you know, we're making ravioli with some of this. And so I want it to be a little bit sturdier. And so that's why we're using the combination of flour. And if you do like a Google search for pasta recipes, you're gonna see recipes all over the board. You know, some of them have egg in them. Ours actually has four eggs in it. Um, some don't even have any egg. Some have semolina flour, and I'll talk about semolina flour in a little bit. Some have just all-purpose flour. It's, it's just all over the board, all the, all the different types of pasta that there are out there. But you know that, you know, because when you buy different types of pasta, there's all different kind of textures and things to it. So I just have, uh, I have my double zero flour on one side, and now I'm gonna put my all purpose on the other side. It's 120 grams. And hey, if you haven't gotten the recipe for this, you can go to our website, makeitsweet.com, and go to our classes section, and the recipes are, are posted right with the class information. So now, you know, I can, even in my head, add 280 and 120, but I don't even have to, because all I need to do is hit tear and z until it's zero, and then I can add my 120 grams. And I like to do this where it's on one side. So if I go a little over, I can be able to pull it out from where it is and know that it's still the all-purpose flour. As you get closer, just go less and less. There we go, 113, 14, 115, 119. Couple more grains of flour in there, come on. There we go. All right, and now I'm gonna add my salt. And I like to use kosher salt for this or sea salt um, rather than like a regular iodized salt, just a regular kosher or sea salt works well. So this is a teaspoon that's gonna go in here. And now I'm just gonna give this a good mix. There we go. So just mix it up and I'm gonna make a well in here. So I'm gonna take my fork and I'm gonna push the flour up on the sides of the bowl. So out of the center and up on the sides. I was hoping by using this glass bowl that you guys can, can see a little bit easier um, all the stuff that we're doing with this. So There we go. So it's mostly out of the center and just up on the sides. Set that aside and now I wanna get all my liquid ingredients going. So this one is actually going to be ounces that we're working with with this. So I'm gonna hit unit till I'm on ounces, hit tear till you're on zero. And the first thing I'm gonna add is my olive oil. So this one is going to be two ounces of olive oil. So that's a quarter cup. And you could measure it separately, but what we're gonna do, we're, gonna, we're working to get a total of 11 ounces of liquid. And the reason we're doing that is because, you know, sometimes when you get eggs, you know, even if they're grated as large eggs, which is what these are, you know, you're always gonna have some variation where there's gonna be little eggs, big eggs, you know, they're gonna be all over the place. So we wanna go to a total weight of 11 ounces. And so between our oil, the eggs that we're gonna add, 
and then water to make up the difference to get to our 11 ounces. There we go. If I was, if I was paying attention to what I was doing here, I would have another little bowl that I could crack my eggs into and then add them in. That way if I had some shell or if it was a weird egg or something, I wouldn't be adding it straight in here, but we're just going, we're just going for it. All right, now I'm going to, so I'm at eight ounces. When I did this earlier, uh, it was at 8.2 ounces. So it's always gonna be off just a little bit. So now I'm just gonna keep adding water until I'm at 11 ounces. And what that does, it just makes sure that it's always gonna be the same amount of liquid. And there's always gonna be some variation, you know, with the, um, like when you're kneading flour in, there's always gonna be some variation with it because, you know, it's all humidity driven and temperature and all kinds of stuff. I had to add quite a bit of flour as I was kneading it earlier to keep it from being sticky just because it's so humid outside with all the rain that we have going on. All right, I'm just gonna break these up. I'm not really trying to scramble this in here, but I just wanna make sure that my yolks are not just, just whole yolks in here now. All right, there we go. Back to the flour. So the flour's in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my liquid and I'm just gonna pour it into the, the pool here. So into that center. There we go. And now this is truly my, my implement of choice here. So what you want to do is take your fork and just very gently, you're starting to work the flour into the liquid. And notice what I'm doing, I'm turning my bowl just slowly so that I'm able to get to all of it. I'm basically leaving my fork almost in the same spot. I'm down at the bottom of the bowl, touching the bottom of the bowl, and it's just a little tiny circle. I'll have plenty of time to get lots of flour incorporated as we're going, but you want to just start this slowly. So can you see that this might be a little bit messy if you did this on your counter? You know, um, it, it looks fancy and fun. You can, you can show off and do that, but, uh, but practice it quite a bit before you do it. I remember in culinary school, um, them making us do it that way, where it was on the counter and everyone had like egg and liquid and oil going all over the place. You know, it was, it was a mess, so. I, my, my theory is, you know, if you have a bowl and who doesn't have a bowl, why not use it? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know that there's any advantage. Someone should chime in if you know that what, what the advantage is to doing it on your counter rather than we should get some uh, fancy chefs out there. Come on, let us know what's the, what's the advantage for doing it on the counter versus in a bowl. All right, so you can see it's getting, it's getting thicker. I'm able to add more flour. And now that it's getting thicker, my circles are getting bigger and bigger with this. So it's going around. I'm still turning my bowl. That's just helping me get to all of it. Kind of keeping that same motion, but getting to all of it. So this is one of those things, you know, if you're making it with the kids, you know, give everyone a chance to stir and to do this. And then everyone should have a chance to knead because that's the, that's the fun part too. And that way one person doesn't have to do all the, all the heavy lifting. There we go. All right, so now I can get even bigger and bigger circles. This would be the part where if you were doing it on your tabletop, it's not going to be um, going anywhere. It's gonna stay right on your, on your counter at this point. So you don't have to, don't have to worry about breaking, the, breaking that wall that you made. I 
I think it's kind of one of those things that even if you just practice in a bowl a couple of times, it gives you the idea of how to do this. And then if you want to try it on your counter, it's kind of easier rather than just going, going straight to the counter is kind of a, a little bit scarier proposition. All right, now I'm just really trying to work the flour in. So I'm gonna use my fork, I'm gonna move this around. If you have a KitchenAid style mixer, uh, could you use that? Absolutely, um, no problem with, with that. You would use your bread hook. So it's not, the, it's not the paddle, it's your bread hook for it. And don't have, the, the, um, don't have it any faster than a one or a two. We have a whole, a whole um, graveyard. It's, it's now Randy's project to, uh, instead of doing like a crossword puzzle or something, right, or a uh, jigsaw puzzle right now, he's working on fixing old KitchenAid mixers. If he gets really good at it, I'll let you know. Because everyone has like that old KitchenAid that, you know, the gears are, are stripped and just not good. But you know what? You've got your KitchenAid right here. So you can, you can do it yourself. All right, so see, I've gotten all the flour to incorporate. It's still a quite a sticky dough, so we're gonna need to put some flour down for us to knead into. If you wanted to put herbs or something in there, when would you do that? Is that like it would it would have been like right now? Yeah. So we could have added that in. That's a great question. So if you wanted to add in like dry herbs, if you wanted to add in some pepper, that would be really good. We bought a pasta at the at the farmers market yeah. the other day that was a um, a garlic pepper lemon, and I can't wait to have that one with some with some shrimp do that, that would be great. You want it to be dry. You don't wanna add like a wet ingredient in here because, um, because it's just gonna change the consistency on it. So a, for the lemon, I would have added uh, like lemon zest and then some black pepper and then some garlic, granulated garlic would work. But there's so much that you can do with it. All right, so notice I have a pool of flour here and then I have a sprinkle of flour here. That's the important part with this. I'm not gonna knead it in this pool of flour. I may end up kneading quite a bit of that, but I'm going to just knead it into the, the sprinkle of flour because I'm only gonna add flour when it's sticky on my hands or sticky on the table. I'm using my bench scraper and I'm just scraping out the bowl right into my little sprinkle of flour here. Get it all, that's an extra noodle, part of a ravioli. All right, there we go. I'm gonna keep my bench scraper in my hand because I'm actually gonna use my bench scraper to help me toss this around. I'm gonna go ahead and put a sprinkle of flour on the top and now I'm gonna hold one hand and then my bench scraper and I'm just gonna to toss this dough around in the flour. What that's gonna do, that's just gonna kind of coat it. It's gonna dust it so that then when I come in to knead, I'm not gonna end up with a bunch of dough on my fingers. If I started with my fingers to start with, it would have been dough all over my fingers. And once it gets sticky, it's just gonna stay sticky. So go ahead and stop, go wash your hands, come back and then you have clean hands to be able to come back to it. But I like the bench scraper method, tossing it around, it makes it much easier. So I'm gonna put a little bit of flour into my hands, rub your hands together and now knead. So this is just like bread. So what I, my motion that I like to do for bread, I do two times in with the heels of my hands and I'm kind of rocking it back and forth. I use my fingers to rock it back and forth and then do a quarter turn. And when I do that quarter turn, I fold it in half. So two times rocking in and then that quarter turn with the fold. And once you get going with it, you just kind of develop a rhythm with it. 
and it just doesn't, you know, this doesn't seem like work. I find this very zen-like. This is really, really relaxing to me. So at, um, at our house, whenever I make like bread or something like this at home, uh, we have an island that kind of looks out into our family room. And so I feel like I'm still a part of everything that's going on. So if Randy's in there doing something or watching TV or whatever, you know, we still, we, we can still connect. I'm not, I'm not far away doing this. And I could just stand and do this all day long because I'm not working so hard that I would work up a sweat. This is, this is just a gentle motion. I'm not really pushing hard with it. I'm just pushing in, you know, enough to move it around, but I'm not really working this super hard. So just a nice, very gentle motion with it. There we go. So this is much like bread. This is gonna feel like a nice soft bread dough. And see how like right now, see how I have like all the craggy part on the top and, uh, and then what's down on the surface, this is much smoother, but um, this will all come together and be nice and smooth once I, once I have kneaded this and I get it to the point where it's not sticky. When it's sticky and you're still adding flour, it's always gonna do that as you're starting to knead go you can see this is a nice soft dough and it's quite yellow because of um, all the eggs that are in here so this is four eggs in here so it's a it's a nice uh, very very rich kind of dough so what I'm looking for is for the dough to not be sticky on my hands or sticky on the table and for it to look smoother so I'm already at the point where it's, where it's basically looking smoother. I'll turn it over in just a second. But see, did you see that? It's still like sticky on my hands and still a little sticky on the table. So those are the two criteria, not sticky on my hands and not sticky on the table. There we go, almost there. So this dough, you would want to uh, use it after you, it needs to rest for about half an hour, so you wrap it in plastic, and, um, and then you could use it today. If you're not using it till tomorrow, then keep it wrapped in plastic and in the refrigerator, so up to 24 hours in the refrigerator. I don't like to keep it in the fridge any longer than that. You can freeze it, and it freezes beautifully. But the problem is, you know, there's no preservatives in here. This, it, it, it will eventually oxidize, and what ends up happening, it doesn't, it doesn't go bad, but it just looks bad. Cause it's gonna, it's gonna not have this beautiful like yellow color. It's gonna look a little like gray, almost like a greenish gray. So you kind of think that it has, that it's gone bad, but it hasn't. It's just that, it's just that it oxidizes. And so it's just not gonna have that pretty look to it because there aren't preservatives in here. All right, so I am right there. It's not sticky on my hands. It's not sticky on the table. And wait till I turn it over and you can see how nice and smooth this is. So that was about five minutes of kneading. So again, it's not, it's very gentle. You're not having to work up a sweat with it. It's just very, very simple with it. So I'm getting some plastic wrap. And I'm just gonna put my dough inside the plastic wrap. Just wrap it up nice and nice and tight. There we go. And if you're using it like within the next couple of hours, just leave it at room temperature. Don't put it in the refrigerator because that will make it harder to roll it out. You want to just leave it at room temperature. If you're not using it till tomorrow, put it in the refrigerator overnight and then tomorrow, you know, at least an hour before you're ready to roll it out, take it out of the refrigerator and let it start to come to room temperature. All right, everyone good? All right, I'm gonna take the one that I had rolled before or that I had made before and I'm going to show you rolling out and what we can do with this. So let me just move some stuff to the side clean off my area a little bit. 
we're gonna go straight into rolling it out so I don't need to totally wipe down because we're gonna use flour to keep it from sticking. All right, there we go. So you'll see when you go to open this up, it's gonna feel stickier than it was when you put it away. That's exactly what it's supposed to feel like, so no worries. This amount of dough will make about 48 ravioli, the size that we're gonna make them. It'll make tons of pasta. All right, so see how sticky? Like it's sticky on my hands, sticky on the table. Again, use your, use your bench scraper, kind of move it around. There we go. And I don't worry about adding some additional flour. I'm not kneading the flour in, it's just on the outside. So additional flour is not a problem. That's what's gonna help keep this from sticking. So I like to form this into a little bit of a rectangle. There we go. And I'm gonna cut it into fourths. We're only going to roll a little bit at a time because if I tried to roll this huge piece, this would end up like covering my entire table. It would just be so much dough to be rolling out at once. So much easier to work with small segments than, uh, than trying to make it a big, huge piece of dough. All right, I'm gonna take these and I'm going to wrap my extras in plastic. So I'm just gonna set them to the side and then I'm gonna start with this one. All right, this I'm gonna make some ravioli with. So I'm actually going to cut this in half because what I want is to have a piece of dough that, that I get maybe like 12 out of. And that just makes it so much easier to roll and to work with. So if you, if you have your pieces and if one looks a little bit smaller than the other, make your smaller one the bottom one and the, and the top one the little bit larger one. So I'm gonna take a little bit of flour, sprinkle it on, and then let me grab my rolling pin. So I'm just gonna use a small rolling pin because it's a small piece of dough. If you're using a bigger piece of dough or if what you have is like a regular big rolling pin, absolutely fine. But I like, I like this, it just makes it seem easier. You're not really having to work at it as much. So it makes it, makes it much, much easier. All right, so there we go. Anytime it feels sticky on your, on your table, what you want to do is you want to, you want to uh, roll this, there we go and then just pick it up and then you want to and then you want to be able to put a little bit more flour down and so i'm just going to keep rolling there we go i'm going to need to try to make my top part kind of match the bottom so i like to try to make it kind of a, a rectangle like this and you can see it's starting to kind of uh to come back on me it's not wanting to stay in the big rectangle. Just keep working it. If it ever is doing that so much that it's just like really coming back to your original shape, then go ahead and just walk away for a few minutes or start rolling out your other piece that's gonna be the top. There we go. It's really important that you have a good amount of flour down. Because if you don't, what ends up happening is that it, once it starts to stick on here, it's just going to keep sticking and you're not going to be able to, uh, to work it up. And it's just, it's kind of like you're having to like have it roll on top of itself. You're gonna have to work so much more. So look at this, I am like just about there. I want to show you what we're looking for. What we're looking for is for this to be so thin that you can see through it. And so I'm gonna put my recipe sheet here underneath and that's gonna be my, my decider whether, it, whether I can see through it or not. And I hope you guys can see that. 
I can see where it says make it sweet and the blue lines. I can see the picture here. I can see all of that. So I know I have a good thickness to this. So this is very thin. It's probably about a 16th of an inch or even a little bit less. And that's what I like for ravioli because you know, ravioli are going to end up being two layers. You're gonna have the layer with the, with the, with um, the bottom and then you're filling and then you have another layer on top. So you don't want it to be super thick dough. So I'm gonna take a little piece, a little bit of flour on here, put it right on, and now I'm just gonna fold this and put it to the side. I'm gonna roll out what'll be the top. Remember, I wanna to try to keep it about that same shape so I know I need it to be about as wide as my rolling pin and pretty long. And if it starts to feel sticky on your table, you need a little bit more flour on there. Makes it easier if your top is a little bit larger than the bottom. Just makes it easier to put it on. Put it on. I'll show you a trick for being able to get the, the top onto the bottom. If it's feeling sticky on your rolling pin, like did you see that where it picked up on me? Just a little bit of flour on the top. And again, these are just sprinkles of flour. And the longer that the dough sits, the, um, the easier it is to, uh, to roll and, uh, and it won't kind of come back on you. There we go. Just about there. A little bit more width. There we go. And then you can always, if you want to, you can kind of check with your two pieces and see if they are compatible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my recipe underneath again, just to make sure. It's feeling really sticky right there. There we go. All right. So now I can check this to see if I have about the same shape. So I can just put one on top of the other. That'll be perfect. I'll be able to get all of that and almost right to the edge. Get a little bit more width here just to account for my filling that's going to go on there. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a little bit of flour on this one and then fold my bottom or my top into half and put that one to the side. So now I'm back to the bottom and the important part before you get started with this, make sure you have flour down because there is nothing more disappointing than, uh, than getting all your filling on, doing this, and then it's stuck to your table so you can't get them off. It's happened before and it's not so fun. So learn from, learn from my mistakes here. All right, we're gonna use uh, some ravioli cutters for this. You could just as easily use a pizza cutter or a ravioli cutter or other things. So we have ravioli cutters that are like this. So they are, they are rounds and squares. The round, uh, I'll just let you know, the round is so much easier to work with than the square. The square just doesn't cut as easily, so it's much harder to work with. But at your house, if you don't have ravioli cutters, then you probably, you may have like a set of like round, like biscuit cutters. You could use those that come in different sizes. And so I'm just gonna go with one that's about three inches across. This ends up being about the same size as my round. So you could use that. If you don't have any of these things, 
chances are you have a pizza cutter and you can do the same thing with a pizza cutter. It's just gonna be a little bit harder to mark it the way that we're going to do. So with this, I'm going to take this and I'm just gonna use my pizza cut or my um, ravioli cutter and I'm just gonna mark it. I am not cutting all the way through. I am just getting an impression on here. There we go. I think I can squeeze one more in there. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Perfect. All right. And now for our filling. So I love ricotta cheese filling and, uh, and I actually made this ricotta cheese. So instead of having to stop at HEB this morning, which was gonna take forever, um, and who knows whether they were gonna have ricotta cheese, it's very simple to make ricotta cheese. You take whole milk and cream. So it's eight cups of milk and one cup of heavy cream. You heat that in a pan, so in like a saucepan, heat it to 200 degrees. And then you have lemon juice and cider vinegar that goes in. That's what makes the curds. And so that goes in, you heat it back to 200 degrees. And then the, the special equipment that you have to have is some cheesecloth. So put some cheesecloth into a colander and then you pour this in after it's set for about 10, 15 minutes or so, you pour it through the cheesecloth into the colander and then let it drain. And so then you have fresh ricotta cheese. This does not last for as long as the one in the plastic container, but it tastes a lot better than the one in the plastic container. And, uh, and so I'm gonna use this in my, in my filling. Here I have some spinach and uh, garlic. I just took some frozen spinach, sauteed it with a little bit of garlic and some olive oil, and, uh, and then I'll have that as, my, as part of my filling. So you can see the texture on this ricotta cheese is just perfect. And since it doesn't have any preservatives or anything in it, it is just delicious. All right, mix that together. This is all to taste, so it doesn't have to be, you know, spinach in here. You could come up with all different kinds of fillings. It could be just the ricotta cheese. That would be fine. You could use an egg as a binder in here if you wanted to. I'm gonna do it without. It doesn't really need it. Because, because I have so much spinach and ricotta in here, I'm not gonna need the egg binder in here. But I am gonna add some Parmesan cheese in here as well. So just some, just some dry Parmesan cheese. This is not the fancy kind. It's just, it's just a grated Parmesan cheese from the green container. There we go. Be careful with adding a bunch of salt in here if you are using uh, the, some Parmesan cheese, because Parmesan cheese can be quite salty. The recipe sheet has, some, has this filling on it, uh, and then there's also a corn and, um, and Italian sausage filling. If you wanted to add some bacon in here, you could do that, that would be delicious. Sorry, Randy, no bacon in here today. <laughs> so it's so just gonna be. Somebody asked what about cream cheese? Could you use cream cheese in a pinch? In a pinch, you could use cream cheese. Um, it's not going to be as as um, flavorful as this, and you definitely would need to use an egg as your binder for it because it, it's not as, uh, it doesn't have as much moisture in it. Would you grab some plastic for, uh, spoons for me? Yeah. All right, so the other things that I need for this, I need to have uh, an egg wash. And so an egg wash is just a combination of egg and water. And, uh, and it, so it's like one tablespoon of water to one egg. And that's going to be my glue that's gonna help hold this together. All right, so when you do this, what you want to do, it, it sounds really good to have a huge amount of filling in your ravioli, but you want them to hold together. So, uh, so just, a, just about a teaspoon amount 
for the for this kind of three inch round size is perfect there we go and notice how you can see all the way around the edge of the ravioli it your filling cannot go all the way to the edge if it does they are not going to close and then the problem is going to be when you're boiling them then the filling's actually going to come out it's not going to it's not going to stay in the ravioli we want the filling to stay in the ravioli so uh, so we want a nice edge all the way around there we go and a little bit of filling goes a long way like that amount that i made in the bowl that would easily do 24 maybe 36 ravioli for sure and the um the ricotta recipe makes like right at a pound of ricotta cheese all right looks good one more here all right so now what i need to do is put my egg wash on here move my filling so i'm just gonna dip my egg in or dip my my pastry brush in and i want to go against the side i don't want to it's not swimming in it i just want to have enough go all the way around that's just going to be my glue that's going to hold this together that's what's going to Hold it so that when I crimp this and put the top on, it's gonna hold together. All right, the reason that we mark it with the, with the cutter is so that you know where to put your filling and how to space it. We're actually, once as soon as we put the, the lid on this, you're not even gonna be able to see where, where we had it. But, the, but that still gave me an area to know where I could put my filling and uh and how big i needed the spacing to be so that's why the marking it makes it much much easier all right whether it's a round cutter cutter whether it's the biscuit cutter if you're doing it even if you're doing it with um with a pizza cutter i would still mark it even just with a mark your squares with a bench scraper and then you would be able to know where you could put your filling right there we go so move that to the side and now what I can do is put the top on so what I'm gonna do I'm just rolling I'm I'm gonna take my my piece that's the top and I'm going to take my rolling pin I'm gonna put it at the end and I'm just gonna roll this up I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on there that's just my insurance it's not going to not going to stick just roll it up on my rolling pin and then what i can do is just drape it right down at the bottom don't worry if it's not covering up all of it yet we'll be able to stretch it right on there so now watch this is the beauty of this dough it is so elastic and stretchy and so i can go ahead and i want to just make sure that i'm not seeing any of my any of my round design where I had cut it on the outside. There we go. Great. And now I'm going to take my hands and I'm just going to kind of cup them and I'm going to go around each ravioli. Randy, how many will you eat for dinner? Uh, like six or so. Okay. I'll have Try to make. I'll eat six easy, so <laughs> I'll have to make another sheet later. That's what the extra dough is for, so perfect. All right. We're just going to make a very simple tomato sauce to go with this because you want all the flavor to come from that ricotta cheese and your spinach. If you have a little bit of air that's in here, don't worry. As we cut individual ones, that'll be able to, to come right out. So I'm just about ready to cut them. I wanna get my sheet pan ready for putting them on here. And so 
I just have a sheet pan that's lined with some parchment paper. And I like to use parchment paper because that will make it easier to get them off. And then I'm gonna put some real insurance on here so that it won't stick. So this is semolina flour. Semolina is a wheat flour, but it's more like the consistency of cornmeal. And you want to use uh, semolina rather than cornmeal because cornmeal is going to add flavor to it, where semolina is not. It's not going to. It's not going to change the flavor of it. Notice I'm putting a good amount of semolina down on the on my sheet pan. That's going to make sure that it's not going to stick. So now take your cutter and just press in. Make sure that your filling is just centered and then I'm just gonna give it a little wiggle. And there we go, there is our first ravioli. And so I'm just gonna keep going and cutting all my ravioli out. And then the other thing that I want to show you before we go, I wanna show you what we can do with our scraps and also just rolling to make noodles because homemade pasta, just just noodles. It's good. You don't have to go to all the trouble of ravioli. There we go. So when you're when you are ready to make these for the ravioli, uh, you need a pot of boiling water. So you want it to be boiling, but not like crazy fast boiling. So at a boil, but not not just a full rolling boil and uh, lots of salt in the water. And that's what's gonna add flavor to your pasta as well. And then, uh, and then these will take about seven minutes, the, the ravioli. The noodles, they'll be done like that. So probably like two to three minutes and they are, they are done. So really, really quickly. But the, but the ravioli do take a little bit longer because it's the, it's the double layer on there. When I'm putting these onto my sheet pan, I wanna make sure that it's just a single layer, that they're not even touching. They're not touching at all. And if you weren't going to be using these until say, you know, much later today or not using them till tomorrow, you could keep them in the refrigerator and you would leave it just on the sheet pan, just like this. Don't put plastic wrap or anything over the top because that's gonna make your dough too sticky. So you want it to be just like this. I Normally, if I leave it overnight in the refrigerator, I would put them into like a box. So like a cardboard box, like a cake box, you know, or a, um, or a box like that would be, would be perfect. And that way, they're, you feel like they're a little bit more protected, but they're fine just like this in the refrigerator overnight. All right. There we go, just about done with this sheet. And then let's talk noodles. And then we'll talk about sauces for a second. Did you talk about being able to freeze these? I did not. So yes, you could freeze them. They would be, they're perfect. So I like to freeze them just like this. So on to, onto your sheet pan, put this into the freezer until they are totally solid. Once they're totally solid, then you can take them and put them into like a zip top bag and be able to save them that way. Um, if you tried to put them in the zip top bag right now before they're, before they're frozen, they're just gonna stick together. So you need to have an area in your freezer where you can put your sheet pan and be able to hold them. And then how long? Uh, a couple of months, you could keep them like two months, that would be fine. I wouldn't keep them much longer than that. You know, it is a fresh pasta dough. <clears throat> All right, I hate to waste. And so you can actually take this dough and mix it with part of your other dough. So I like to take kind of a sticky side of my dough, put this to the side, wrap this in plastic, and then you would be able to roll this out to make noodles with. And so you're not having to waste your extra dough. And this will all roll out just fine once it has, once it has rested and relaxed. So into plastic and then come back and you'd be able to roll that out and be able to make some, some noodles with it. 
I'll do that. Maybe we'll have some noodles too. Yeah, a lot of dough. To eat. We have a lot of dough because we had because <laughs> we had uh, the dough that I made earlier with uh, that I just made for with you guys. So I have this whole one plus that the one that I'm working with. So whew. carb central at my house. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to roll this out very much the same way. I'm not going to go quite as thin as I did for the ravioli, so not quite as thin. But I still want to roll this out. So this is my full fourth piece. This is not the eighth like we did for the ravioli. And that's because I'm not going to roll it quite as thin. These rolling pins, a lot of times these rolling pins come with like little guides on them. And those are nice to use for this, especially if you're just gonna roll like a nice um, long piece like this. That way you know that your dough is all even thickness with it. There we go. Before I start cutting it, I'll turn it around so that you can see the whole, the whole piece of dough. But notice what I'm doing. I'm picking it up, making sure it's not stuck, and making sure that it's moving around on your table. All right. I always keep the same side up or down because um, what is down on the table already has a lot of flour built up on it. So it makes it so that it rolls out a lot easier rather than if you flip it, then you have your big flour side up and now you're having to add even more flour to it. There we go. All right. And so here we go. I have my big piece of pasta rolled out here. And so now this is gonna be really easy. I've seen some, sorry Randy, I just got flour all over him. <laughs> I've seen some, uh, some people actually roll this up and then cut it. I find the problem with that is that it sticks together too much and then you have to spend a lot of time unrolling it and uh, it just makes it a lot harder to do. I like to just cut it simply with a pizza cutter. So it's nothing, we're not doing anything fancy with it. These are just gonna be like rustic kind of noodles. So, uh, so I'm not trying to do anything, anything really fancy. This dough is, is um, firm enough. You could make other shapes with it. That's a whole other class. All right, fancy, fancy pizza cutter here. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn my, put my uh, glasses on and I'm just, I like to kind of keep my finger here just as a guide. These are more like uh, fettuccine. And some are gonna be thicker or thinner than others, that's fine. I like to cut maybe about a dozen of them and then take this and just take, take a little bit of flour, put it right over top and just kind of toss them. There we go. And so even this, you know, makes a good amount of noodles. You know, would this would work for us, a little pesto sauce and delicious. Some grilled chicken, maybe not tonight. It's kind of nasty outside. All right, we're also gonna toss this with some of our semolina. And when you, the semolina again is gonna keep it from sticking. And when you go to boil this, what's gonna happen is that the semolina is just gonna come right off. It's not going to stay on there. There are some pasta recipes that are made with 100% semolina. I'm not such a big fan of that, especially for homemade for homemade uh, pastas. I'm sure there are commercial ones that um, that are that are just fine with that because they can get a finer ground uh, semolina. But the semolina we can get is more like that, um, you know, like that. Uh, 
cornmeal. So it's going to, it's going to be much, much uh, thicker. So let's see, some semolina over here. There we go. A little bit of semolina right on top. So just a sprinkle, kind of toss it in here. All right, and then I put these onto, onto my sheet pan. And don't crowd them too much. So give them some room. Some semolina down, just like before. All right, there we go. So these, you could uh, make them right away. So this you could boil, you know, right away, right now, or you could, or you could save this and uh, do it later tonight. So if it's up to 24 hours, just put it into the refrigerator. And just like I talked about with the ravioli, you would just leave it just like this, um, just open, open air with it. And then, um, and then you'd be able to boil it. These you could freeze and I would do the same thing. So put this sheet pan into your freezer and, uh, and freeze your noodles and go from there. You could also just freeze your dough. So if you wanted to, if you had like extra dough, like that might be what we end up doing. You know, I have all, I'll have all this extra dough. What I can do is just wrap this in plastic, put this in the, into the freezer, and then I can pull it out and make sure that it comes to room temperature before I'm trying to roll it out and then figure out what I'm gonna make with it another time. All right, let me pull out the ravioli here. Any, any sort of substitute for semolina? don't have it mm, so you could just use a little bit more flour yeah. I would I would just do that rather than trying to add cornmeal in cornmeal is gonna kind of change the the flavor a little bit if you don't mind having that corn flavor it just kind of depends on what your what your filling is then cornmeal would definitely work to uh, to be on there um, semolina may be one of those things that we'll easily be able to find again hopefully, and, uh, and be able to, uh, to get semolina for it. All right, a uh, couple of things. So lots of water when you're boiling this, about two to three minutes for your noodles, about seven minutes for the ravioli. The way I like to test these is to uh, take, one, take one of the ravioli out and then cut just a little tiny bit off of the edge and then taste it, and that way you can see if it's uh, if they are done enough. That's the that's the easy way to do it. And then just drain them. Uh, I like to use just a slotted spoon rather than pouring them into a colander. Uh, it makes it much easier, and and uh, you're a lot more gentle with the with the ravioli that way. So hopefully, I have shown you this is super easy to make pasta and uh and to work with it and you know we don't have to be able to find it in the boxes in the grocery store so uh so you have a recipe um the ingredients are simple ingredients uh hopefully you can find some flour just all-purpose flour is fine we use some fancy double zero flour but it doesn't have to be you can use all all-purpose flour and not a problem with that all right any other questions about ravioli or pasta do you put that in a pot, like in clumps, or do you yes. separate it? Yeah, no, you you can put it just like this, and it's going to separate on its yeah. own. All right, let's lift up. Let me let me say goodbye. All right, so glad to ha glad to have you here for pasta. Uh, it was really fun to uh, to come up with doing this class and doing something different. You know, this is like the savory version of, of the things that we do. But you saw the techniques are so much just like bread. And so it's a lot of those those techniques that you that you've learned and that you've gotten used to with bread that you can apply to pasta and other things. So um, so there we go. And uh, make your own ricotta. It's easy and oh my gosh, it's delicious. So I'm looking forward to dinner tonight. Hopefully Randy we is do. too. And uh, and so I will report in tomorrow and let you know how, how the ravioli was for dinner. 
So tomorrow is pot of choux. So we're making cream puffs and eclairs that won't be our dinner tomorrow night. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we'll also make a savory version. We'll make a gougere. And they are my, my favorite before dinner snack. So, uh, so I'll talk about a lot about that tomorrow. And, uh, and those are all simple ingredients. The recipes are right on the website uh, for that. And then the other things that we have this week, we have a gravity defying cake on Wednesday. On Thursday is gonna be cupcakes and Friday is cookies. And, uh, and so we'll have lots of other things coming up. I know that we, um, I still need to plan and schedule the pretzel class uh, that we missed out on last week. We'll schedule that for, uh, for next week and some other ones as well. So if there are things that you're interested in seeing or hearing about or learning about um, while, we're, while we're doing this, just put it in the comments here or email me. Uh, my, my email is jennifer at makeitsweet.com, so easy to, easy to find me that way. Check out our website for our class schedule. And uh, for those of you that were scheduled in live classes coming up in April, we have rescheduled uh, through April 18th. We have rescheduled all the classes and they're right on our website with, uh, with the new date on them. And so we're just rolling, rolling the, the classes forward. And, uh, and so then we'll, have, uh, we'll be working on the ones from the 18th through the end. Sad to say we will not be having classes through at least the end of April. Um, that's, the, that's the mandate here in, the, in uh, the U.S. and also the city of Austin. And so, uh, so we want to definitely be able to follow along with that. So um, enjoy making pasta or making sweets or having things. Enjoy the time you know, to, uh, that it takes to do it. It's not when you're enjoying it, it doesn't make it seem like work. So, uh, so enjoy. Enjoy your pasta. Have a great evening. And hopefully see you tomorrow or the rest of the week. All right, take care. Bye.